Welcome to my twisted world. The persons described in this book are the most prolific and brutal serial killers in United States history. The leader of this gang was my father. Later, my stepbrother joined and he has kidnapped, tortured, and slowly murdered even more victims than my father. The police refused to investigate because they were all cops. My father was an auxiliary police officer in Montgomery County, Maryland, and my stepbrother was a sheriff's deputy in Fairfax County, Virginia. My father required that every member of their gang was an active duty police officer. In addition to local officers from county and state jurisdictions, the gang also compromised agents from the Secret Service, the FBI, and even the NSA. Every gang member received unlimited college scholarships for themselves and their children. These are bribes. This is the largest public corruption case in United States history. What do you want me to do with that? I want you to suck it. You suck it. No, it's for you to suck. Ugh, I'm not sucking that. Suck. Come on, faster. Basically, Congressman Mike Carey of Ohio, through his staff, told me to go suck it. Just suck it. We don't care. Yeah, so your father's the most prolific serial killer in United States history and probably world history. Go suck it. If you wouldn't mind, please forward this video to Congressman Kerry's Twitter or Instagram and demand, demand an investigation. Congress of the United States House of Representatives. Dear Mr. Magellan, this letter is to inform you of our findings based on our investigation into your congressional inquiry. Uh, I am grateful that they did contact at least the U.S. Capitol Police, who act as the liaison between the congressional offices and the FBI. In submitting the request for answers to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, we received the following information. The FBI informed us that you had contacted the FBI in Indianapolis, Miami, Columbia, and Pittsburgh over the years. You make that sound like that's a bad thing. However, in running your name through their operating systems, there was nothing showing an investigation with your name on it ever being open. Hang on a minute. So if I didn't have an investigation, then who are Agent Frank James, FBI, and FBI agents James R. Rogers of the FBI, who was then stationed at the Wheeling, West Virginia FBI office and has an email of jrrogers at fbi.gov. In fact, I made initial contact with James Rogers by calling the FBI in Wheeling, West Virginia. And besides having a conversation with him and sending him emails, he also called me back on my phone at least once. This is in the phone records. I was repeatedly told that he was the lead agent in charge of this investigation. These are the two FBI agents who allegedly conducted an investigation in 2020 for about six months. They found the stolen money, informed me my father was a member of Russian organized crime syndicate that I was not previously aware of. He was also involved in arms trafficking in Eastern Europe, money laundering of hundreds of millions of dollars through Eastern, through European banks. These FBI agents also found half a million in gold crew grants squirreled away in a safe deposit box in Washington, D.C., far away from my father's residence in West Virginia, but under his name. They also informed me that my brother withdrew this money after my father's death. They also found other things I had no idea about, like imperial Russian currency that my father would gift to my aunt to keep her quiet. I had no idea about any of this. Then United States Capitol Police also informed our office about the multiple contacts with FBI offices in the same locations listed above. The USCP's FBI point of contact also stated there was not a case opened with your name associated with it. That's redundant. Our office has exhausted all options regarding your case. Based on the Federal Bureau of Investigation never having opened a case with you, you will need to contact the FBI if you want a case open. Isn't that why I contacted you? We will be closing your case with our office. I actually sent an email to Congressman Kerry's staff working on this issue that offered the two possible lies that the FBI would tell. I said, I'm writing for a progress op update. What did they say? Did they den A, did they deny that agents James and Rogers conducted an investigation? Or B, did they say that the investigation is ongoing and they can't talk about it? They chose option A as their lie. 
On that note, seeing as they deny I had an FBI investigation in 2020 with agents Frank James and James Rogers, let's get into the extensive documented proof I have of this imaginary investigation. These fraudulent FBI agents sure do have extensive resources because I have been unable to find a lawyer who can even duplicate what they uncovered for any amount of money. The first piece of evidence I have from Agent Frank James, FBI, the personal friend and former college roommate of my uncle, is the DEA badge of the woman I call Gigi Trayson in my books, Blood Sacrifice and Serial Killer Son. It says, City of New York Police Detective, DEA, Drug Enforcement Agency. So my lifelong stalker, the woman I call Gigi Trayson in my books, is a federal agent with the DEA. She uses her position as a federal agent to murder men, women, and children on a scale larger than any female serial killer in human history. And I have been reporting this woman to law enforcement by full name, social security number, and birth date every time she attacks me with a gun for over 40 years. I've been attacked with a gun probably a thousand times. She has attacked me in nearly all 50 states, Puerto Rico, Malaysia, Thailand, Poland, Germany, France, Britain, Italy, Costa Rica, and more. I'm told her DA, DEA badge was confiscated from James. Confiscated did not say where or when. But don't worry, Gigi now has a fake federal agent's badge issued by the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, where I worked for 15 years. She never worked for the FCC. She has no authority granted to her by the FCC, and so therefore this credential is entirely fake. Who would have issued Gigi Trayson, the most prolific female serial murderer in human history, a fake federal agent's badge from the FCC? Well, the Office of the Inspector General, who I worked with regularly during my time at the FCC. Those who issued my stalker and this murderer, this fake badge, knew they were committing federal crimes, and also those responsible for issuing this badge accepted bribes in the form of college scholarships for themselves and their children, and it will be very easy to prove if anyone ever looks. Our office has exhausted all options regarding your case, Mr. Magellan, based on the Federal Bureau of Investigation never having opened a case with you. Well, my uncle asked Agent Frank James, FBI, his college roommate, and he says this is an active investigation now. The next thing the imaginary FBI agents Frank James and James R. Rogers found was gold Krugerrands squirreled away in a safe deposit box. Here's a picture of one of the Krugerrands sent to me by my uncle. I believe the attraction to Krugerrands is that they have no serial numbers on them, which makes tracking the gold investment by governments more difficult. My uncle told me several hundred of these were found in your father's safety deposit box at National Capital Bank in 1999 per records found. That's pretty specific. 200 plus coins valued at $1,700 each as of this text, which is 2020. Today's value for one one ounce South African gold Krugerrand is $2,100.40. 200 coins, conservatively, because he said there's at least 200 coins, times $2,100.40 is valued at $420,080 today, almost half a million dollars. The bank accounts in DC were closed out in March. That would have been 2020. Wow, I said, that's when I was talking to my brother. They're erasing the trail. How much money did the FBI find in this one account? All I got from Agent James was seven figures. That's plus $1 million, up to $9 million withdrawn from this one account by my brother in March 2020. Here's a photo of my brother's brand new home. Looks lovely. Here's a photo of my stepbrother's brand new palatial mansion. Very nice. Interestingly, 
My stepbrother also drives a top-end Jaguar F series. <laughs> Special Agent James FBI has profiled your entire family and is checking their financials. Among other things, Agent James says my two nieces got their educations paid for, plus trusts were set up for them. Remember this video I did? Spoke to my neighbor, but my nephew, but both nieces refused to talk. Why? I concluded, based on the fact that my two nieces refusing to talk to me, that they were obviously hiding something. Yeah. They both had their educations fully paid for with this dirty money, and on top of that, they had trusts set up for them from this dirty money. This is what the FBI found in 2020. But remember, in running your name in their operating systems, there was nothing showing an investigation with your name ever being opened. <laughs> your father had bank accounts in England, in Knaresborough, North Yorkshire, England, part of document search. Account closed in 2000. Also in Edinburgh, Scotland, per James. My father died in 2000, so that makes sense. Crazy stuff. No, I didn't know my father had moved the money overseas. Here in the USA, Wells Fargo has come up related to your father's name. They need a court order to get records. Also, National Capital Bank in D.C. So my father had a safe deposit box with half a million dollars in untraceable gold Krugerian coins, plus two more bank accounts in his name. That seems like a lot for a man who was a low-level government employee his entire life, whose salary never broke six figures. Where did he get all this money? Also, these imaginary FBI agents. Notice the FBI did not deny that these two persons... Uh, Frank James and Jane and the other guy were, they didn't deny that they were FBI agents. They simply said that no official investigation was listed in their records. Large sums of money found in these English and Scottish banks were also moved around frequently in a scheme they characterized as money laundering. Did James find enough financial stuff to continue? Yes. Ongoing investigation. Rest assured. My work, said my uncle. I've known James for over 25 years. We were in the army together. Agent James also said something about arms smuggling. Poland, Romania, Russia is all he would say about the arms smuggling. The FBI agents also established direct ties to Russian organized crime for these activities. I can confirm the mafia ties as my father before his death showed me a tattoo on his chest given only to members of Russian organized crime syndicates. He said at that time that he was a made member of Russian organized crime. I didn't know what to make of it at the time. We were at the Polish embassy, and he showed several people present this mafia tattoo. Apparently, my father has a restricted file at the FBI. Special Agent James needs to get access. All Agent James said was that the NSA has a hold on it. Apparently, there's foreign government involved. So the FBI found evidence of money laundering, arms trafficking, direct links to Russian organized crime, and overseas accounts used for illegal purposes, but then didn't open an official investigation or prosecute the crimes uncovered? <laughs> Wait a minute. Something doesn't smell right here. Why is my father's FBI file restricted? Was he a confidential informant? Why does the NSA have a hold on my father's file? And a foreign government is involved. Does that mean that another foreign government is aware of the criminal acts and mafia ties associated with this dirty money? Are other governments investigating the arms trafficking? When an individual like my father is designated as a confidential informant, basically this person informs as a federal witness against other criminals in their own organization, like a mafia person. So did Gigi Tresan, a federal agent for the DEA, designate my father as a confidential informant over the criminal organization that she and my father ran for their own gain. So literally, a federal agent is pretending to investigate a criminal organization that she actually runs. 
She had the FBI and the NSA files sealed and restricted to further prevent anyone else from finding out what she and my father were doing. The criminal organization basically just kills anyone who gets in their way. They've tried to kill me over a thousand times. The U.S. government, through their federal agent, Gigi Tresan, protects her gang members from any possible prosecution by declaring their protected confidential informants in a federal investigation. They destroy evidence, they threaten witnesses, etc. They were playing both sides the entire time. They allow the informant, my father, to continue their criminal activities as usual with all of their criminal co-conspirators. In fact, they encourage it for an indefinite period of time, while law enforcement, the DEA in this case, allegedly builds their case against the other criminals in the organization. This could go on for years or even indefinitely. Basically, this has gone on for 40 years while the DEA federal agent allegedly built a case against the criminal organization and other specific criminals associated with the confidential informant, my father. Apparently, many of these cases never go to trial. So it seems the FBI and the U.S. government is aware of my father's criminal activities. They are aware of his ties to Russian organized crime and his involvement with them. Gigi Trayson is a federal agent with the DEA, were they also involved in drug smuggling into the USA? Because DEA is Drug Enforcement Agency. They have to make some kind of a link to drugs, right? I happen to know that Gigi Trayson's father is an FBI agent, which is how she got the job at the DEA. Are they protecting other corrupted federal agents by restricting the FBI file? I have personal knowledge of corrupted FBI agents DEA agents, Secret Service agents, and secret uniformed Secret Service officers and other federal officials who took this dirty bribe money. The final thing I want to cover in this video is the search of the 49 acres in West Virginia, where I state that there are over 100 bodies on this property alone, and I'm an eyewitness to several murders on this property, and I have knowledge of the burial locations of multiple victims. First of all, these two FBI agents, Frank James and James Rogers, got help in this search by the addition of two additional FBI special agents named Hirschfield and Gardas. There were three working canines on the property for the search. I told them that there was a body in the five-foot space between the side door walkout and the butcher shed. This is a young deer hunter who was shot point blank in front of me pretty much at that exact spot. My uncle forwarded me the communication from Special Agent James. It reads, they checked the entire front in front of the farmhouse. Both sides of the farmhouse, 20 yards to each side, were ground irradiated. Area, The area around the house to 100 feet. Cemetery, there's an old church in a cemetery abutting this property, and I know at least one body was buried in the cemetery and then moved later. I believe this is the cyclist, and I know exactly where he's buried. The cemetery was scanned to determine disturbances. Did you find any dead bodies in the cemetery? It's a cemetery. Road was then further scanned to public access. There's a very long dirt road about a you know, to come onto the property. It's about a quarter mile and it hugs the creek on one side before opening up onto higher land by the farmhouse. The house was examined, including the root cellar, the old orchard. There's an untended apple orchard across the creek that does not belong to this 49 acre property. The old orchard was walked with the ground penetration device. Financial records appear more promising. They told me repeatedly that they found the money and they were going to get it back to me. I was told that Berkeley Springs police were involved. West Virginia State Police, West Virginia CID, which is the Criminal Investigation Division. That seems like a lot of resources to expend on an investigation that was never official and took over six months to get that far. Thank <laughs> you.